Hey, welcome back to the Mobility Project. Here's what we're going to take on today. This very kind of supple, crazy field of what's called clinical neural dynamics. And specifically what we're talking about is, uh, it's a fancy word for how well your nerves run through the systems, run through the meat tunnels, run through the bony channels. And the problem as a human being is that you have a fixed um, length nervous system. In fact, if I bend over and kind of round and then t try to even touch my head, my spinal container, the container of my body, my spinal cord, the length, can get upwards of nine centimeters longer. The problem is that my nervous system remains as a fixed length. The issue for you is that because your nervous system is a fixed length, it's kind of pull and slide and, and have all this kind of lots of movement through here. So in this position, actually, what's really happening is that I am seeing, if you did an ultrasound in my brain, so you actually see it pulled out of my skull at that point. Sometimes I get emails from, from athletes saying, hey, I sit, and then when I sit and some things happen, I get some strange symptoms. A lot of times that when, you're, when we suspect that we're having a neural dynamic problem with a patient or an athlete, we'll put them into what we call a slump test. This is not a, a good height, but uh, if I sat here, and we usually sit at the edge of the table. Can you see me from the side? Sit at the edge of the table, put my legs back. This is kind of a standardized slump test. Hands back, and you can experience this slump yourself is that if I keep my eyes up and slump, what I've done is I've loaded my thoracic spine. Remember, we've talked about that thoracic spine kind of being a repository for a lot of neural slack that goes into my arms. And so if my nervous system is screwed down in my thoracic spine, where all the sympathetic chain ganglia uh, live, uh, kind of those, uh, the repository and the kind of signaling centers for all your sympathetic nervous system, then if that's stuck down, one of the things that happens is that I kind of can't feed slack forward in my arms, potentially have things that look like pain problems, carpal tunnel, golfer's elbow, kind of tennis elbow, neck problems, but they really end up being kind of challenged nerves as they go on these tunnels. And one of the things you can do if you head behind your back and then you slump, you put your one leg up and the other leg up, and then drop your head, oftentimes you can get a neural sign. And this is pretty high neural tension. In fact, I am a little bit stiff in my back right now, and in this slump position, where I drop my head, I get a little zing in my hamstring and come up. In fact, this is one of the problems we see with pregnant mothers or uh, new, new mothers who uh, are holding their children. Their feet, feet are out. They're basically in a slump test, and then they put their necks in this horrible position with shoulder forward, round back, high neural tension, and we get these problems. So here's what we're going to do today. I'll show you a couple neural dynamic things that you can do at your desk. And what we're really trying to do is slide nerves through. We're not trying to stretch them. We're trying to slide those nerves through the meat tunnels. We know by experience, and we've talked about this before, that the more supple I have, the kind of more mobility I have between my thoracic spine, between those motion segments of my thoracic spine, I'm able to improve the excursion to my arms. So one of the things I can do is take a double cross ball, especially if I have something that smells nervy. Like it's weird and nervy sometimes, you know, and what I can do is just do my basic rolling through here. Each segment, one at a time, and we're trying to solve kind of complex, weird problems. If I think I'm having a kind of a nervy problem or something that smells weird, that's not responding to traditional therapy, then take this off the bat. So, you know, let's get you guys on this today. The second thing is a nice kind of nerve glide for the device. Sometimes you just get tacked out. I mean, there's a lot of movements that we do in CrossFit and good weightlifting that support the nervous system. So for example, an active shoulder keeps this um, kind of distance between the nerves coming out of my neck into my arm short. If I drop that shoulder, I suddenly potentially challenge my nerve uh, kind of bundle, brachial plexus, puts a lot more kind of tension in the system. Imagine suddenly now that I have crappy overhead positioning, my wrist comes back. This is a high neural tension position. In fact, this is a tension position that a physical therapist would see if you have a neural dynamic problem. Sing! Right? So this is one of the reasons we have active shoulder. When we are back squatting, for example, imagine I have several hundred pounds, like 400 pounds or 500 pounds, on the back. We're tied up and we try to support the neck and push the neck in. This brings the shoulders and neck in line. Remember Tony Blower's test where the head goes up and down and we lose power? Well, this is one of those ideas. Keeping the head in line does not challenge that nervous system. So imagine me tacking four or 500 pounds on my back and then letting my head drop forward to look at the ground. I get a big stretch. No wonder I end up having all kinds of problems in my elbows that look like maybe just mechanical problems, but they could have a neural dynamic 
com compromise components. So it's one of the reasons we shrug into the bar and, and do that. So when we have kind of upstream problems, here's what we're going to do. Hands go out to the side, and we're just going to floss these nerves through the tunnels, not a stretch. What I'm doing is I'm turning up one hand, and I look at the other side, and then I rotate. And I rotate back and forth. And what's happening is that I'm taking tension here, but I'm giving it by turning my head and turning the arm. So my head ends up acting like um, you know, a winch on the boat, and I'm pulling the nerves through. And you can see that I should be able to easily get my shoulders in. If you're doing some weird shoulder thing compromise, that's a problem. But you should have full range of motion. It means I should be able to turn my head at least 90 degrees, either direction. I like it a little bit more. I think that's normal. But many of you guys are only stuck here. You can imagine that your nervous system is pretty tacked down. So that's what we're going to do here and here. I just want you to try this flossing. For the guy who just emailed me, this is for you. Nerve gliding 101. This is a simple problem fixed for uh, sesamoiditis, things like this in the leg. So what I do is I pull the leg to the chest, and then I point, and what's happening is I'm giving slack to the nerve here, and then stretching it here. But then as I pull down, I take tension here, and give it slack here. So this almost looks like a hamstring stretch, and this is in fact a good hamstring stretch, or good posterior chain mobilization for people who are, need to support the back, who have back problems, and then can glide those nerves through this nerve gliding and touch, come back, touch, come back. If you want to experience hot nerve pain, load the whole system up and then go ahead and pull on your foot. You're going to get this hot nerve electric pain. That's what that is. That's not what we're after. We're trying to glide, point, pull, point, pull. If I'm sitting at my desk, just to floss that nerve through that nerve bed, I'm sitting at my desk, I do the same thing where I can slouch and then I can kick my head up slouch, kick my head up, slouch, kick my head up, take the chest out of it. You can see the kind of advantage of doing some basic gymnastics, make sure I'm rolling, have the flexibility so that I can keep my container loose so that my nerves run through. Try some of those things, toy with it, see how that goes for you, and then choose your mobility piece of, of choice, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow.